it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today is a fun video because I often do videos about uh, scraps and strip scraps and all those things, but today we are doing plain old circles. Now I have two punches here today. One is a one inch and then the other is a one and a quarter inch. And we are going to work with these two punches to create a few really cool cards that are super, super simple, quick to put together, and best of all, just punching out circles. Now, of course, if you have dies, that's going to do exactly the same thing. You may have another machine that cuts out circles. These are all good. So let's get into this. Now, I have some rose gold uh, cardstock here. Then I have some vanilla malt. Then I'm also going to take some Gina K Wild Wisteria. Now, the first two that you saw, these two, the Rose Gold and the Vanilla Malt, these are just both scraps. Now, these were on my desk. They are big scraps, obviously. So we're going to make the most of them and we want to make sure we use them up. But we're going to go plain and simple and easy for our first card today. So using the two punches, I am going to go along and punch out as many circles as I can out of these scraps. Now, I never really count and there's no number that I'm aiming for, but I do love that you can turn over your uh, punches and sort of, you know, aim roughly for where you're going. Give or take, not perfect, but you know, and I will make sure that I get both of the sizes out of both of the pieces of cardstock. So I'll just get as many as I can. Of course, you don't have to be using up scraps at all. This is often how I find I get inspired. I think I work better when I have less choice. So often I will take whatever's laying out on my desk from a previous, you know, card that I've created or a project that I've worked on. Or when I have odd, you know, pieces of cardstock that I want to use up, then I will leave them on my desk and that definitely encourages me. Now, you can also see here that actually I am going off the edge and getting even circles that have, um, so some of them are halves, you know, or thirds or two thirds, um, because we can always have those coming off the edge. We can make use of those. So don't just think that we need the only, you know, the whole complete perfect circles. Now, you could do this in several different ways, okay? So you could, I'm going to glue one of the smaller circles on top of the larger circles. And I think I'm pretty much going to keep it that the vanilla malt is going to be on top of the rose gold. The gold, the rose gold is very shiny. And so I think just having an element of that rather than it being pure rose gold on top is going to be what's going to work best here. And then we have that bright, bold, wild wisteria, that purple card base, which is just going to help everything pop off the page. Now, at this point, I wasn't sure how many I needed, so I'm just going to double all of these up and make sure that I have enough um, and I can always create more if need be. I have more of each of these card stocks as well. And so, you know, if we need to, there's no rules that say that we can't dig in and get more of those. But I was trying to work with the scraps that I had of those uh, larger pieces. So once I have got some all doubled up and I think I have enough for my project, then I do need to pick a sentiment that is going to go on top. And I wanted one that was going to fit in one of these circles. So preferably, I guess, into one of the one inch circles. And I have the Concord and Ninth all wrapped up stamp set. Now, I mean, this works for so many different occasions. So I am really enjoying this stamp set. I must say the uh, sentiments are pretty versatile, actually. And then the elements in here are just perfect for decorating all sorts of backgrounds and things. I might even do an entire video on using the elements from this because um, it's a great wee set. But for now, I'm just using the For You, and you can see I've stamped it out in some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is just a pigment, um, beautiful stamping ink. And then this is where I can come to lay out my card. Now, I decided that um, I had some of the one inch circles that were just the rose gold as well. And I thought I may pop some of those in there too, just for a little bit, you know, to break it up a little bit and have a bit more shine. And then some of these, of course, because it is going to be a very, very simple card, we do want to pop some of these up and I will have some laying flat against the card. Again, we're just trying with a really simple card to create a little bit of dimension and a little bit of interest in the card. So at this point, you can really just put things wherever you want. I mean, to me, these kind of almost look like bubbles. They can be whatever your imagination <laughs> wants them to be. It's just a really quick and simple design that took me almost no time to put together. And of course, 
versatile because you could put whatever sentiment that you wanted on this one and I think this would work it's a very um happy looking card and for you is also a really uh, good sentiment because it can be for so many different occasions and then I would just write in the center um you know a more specific message of the person that you were giving it to so here I'm actually going to specifically cut some of these a little bit so they're coming off the edge a little bit more and I touch each one of these circles to make sure that I have remembered to glue them down and um, yeah really really super simple. So you could do this with a whole different range of different colored cardstocks. You could also use some patterned paper. I think that would look fabulous. If you wanted to, you could stencil a little bit of texture into the background first. If you wanted to elevate this, you could do this on a piece of acetate. I've sort of I've shown that technique before, and then it can be like the floating dots all over it. So it, you can take this as far as you would like to. But this one is super super simple. And from here we're going to move on a little bit and do a little bit more. But really Really easy quick card to begin with. Right, let's move on to number two. Still working with those punches. This time I think this is the soft stone color from Gina K. I am going with a couple of sort of different colored card bases just to change things up from my regular white card base. But by all means, you could absolutely just use the white. This is the navy mustard uh, little paper pad here. Now this one has been fun. I have worked with this a little bit and you'll see that um, I have, you know, this half pieces in here and I've cut out lots of circles from this one and I've <laughs> been having a go at it already. But this has lots of beautiful designs. I will say that the reason I purchased this uh, paper pad was more geared towards the boys so that I could have some uh, patterns that were a little, you know, that worked a little bit better for boys cards. Um, and so I have had fun creating lots of different cards with these. And yes, we've got some more videos coming up using this paper pad too. Um, this one was actually a really good price point. So this paper pad here, full price was $3.49 US. I got this at scrapbook.com. And I think usually at the moment, they are always having sales running. There's at least sort of 10% off um, with coupon codes. So make sure that you check this one out. This was a very affordable uh, paper pad. And I really like that. Obviously, <laughs> that's one of the reasons I was drawn to this one. Um, but the patterns are just beautiful patterns along with some great colors that I can make some cards for the boys. So I honestly, I could sit there all day and put these patterns together. They're really, really gorgeous. But I tried to just, you know, go forth and pick some and make a decision. I have also cut a couple of strips from that um, pattern that you saw a minute ago. And then I'm going to cut some mainly of the one inch circles from this one to begin with. And you can see that um, you can just collect them. I'm making little piles and I want a good number of each of these. But again, one of my best tricks that I have is that when you want things to coordinate or you want them to work together, then I just pick colors or patterns all from the same paper prepared and the likelihood is is that these are all going to coordinate and that takes part of the guessing out of it for me so once I have got a little pile there of each pattern and I'm ready to go these are all the one inch circles at the moment um, and then I am going to move on to putting this card together now this one is super super simple it actually goes a lot quicker than you think so I put a strip of adhesive some double-sided tape and then I just start putting the circles down and I just move along. Don't worry if these come off the edges. We're going to fix all of that later. The only thing that I try and do here is to make sure that I don't have one pattern right next to the other. Then I'm going to come in with a next, the next piece of adhesive and I just lay that sort of touching the top of all the previous circles. And then I'm going to go in between the gaps and then lay the next line of circles and then keep going up like this. And this creates a very cool kind of scalloped effect, really. Also, just quickly, sorry very much for the length of this video. I know there's a longer and I always try and stick to shorter videos. But I think it's just, you know, it, it works better to have all of these ideas in one video rather than splitting them up. So let me know in the comment section down below, is that what you prefer, having them all in one? Because I think when I come to watch things, I would rather pause it, uh, if I don't have time to watch the whole thing, I'd rather pause it and then come back to it rather than having to search for a part two later on. Right, back to it, and at this point I am just going through. I am going to have some leftover circles here, but that's okay. I'm not ever worried about that. 
Now, as usual, there's no rhyme or rules here as to how far up the card I am going. Just kind of go up as far as you want, really. I tend to go about three quarters or so of the way up, you know, somewhere between two thirds and three quarters, really. Um, you know, that might depend on when you run out of circles or it might depend on when you feel like it depends on the focal point that you might put up the top. Uh, lots of different things as to where you choose to stop. But I think this is going to be my final row up here. And then I cut that strip there to the left of the screen, that uh, little strip from the paper pad, which I'm going to use to sort of finish this off. Now, if I was going to, I would, if I, you know, if I wanted to use a different paper pad, I would get probably a solid piece of navy cardstock or mustard cardstock or something like that. Um, but, you know, I was just cutting it out from the paper pack and sometimes easier is just better. So this is going to go along the top there. And then I also had a wee strip of the mustard left over and so I thought that I may as well include that in too so I will stick that um, above or below it and it can just really help separate where the circles are going to end and then of course I'm going to need a little focal point and for me I'm keeping this one super simple here you could have a beautiful little you know floral element even something in white black and white would be stunning because there's quite a lot of color going on but I'm just going to go with the sentiment. And so I have a happy birthday sentiment printed out from my printables set. Uh, I have a whole page of sentiments that you can print out from my website, uh, natashafootcreative.com. They are free, completely free for you to go and download and print out and use them all. I've been using them uh, and loving these recently. It's just so easy for me uh, rather than having to go and stamp images. I have them all cut out and sitting by me ready to go. So for this one, I have popped it again on a piece of soft stone cardstock. And then I have rounded off the corners just because it kind of matches the pattern of the happy birthday. And then this one is super simple again. And we are moving on to the next card. Now, this one is really fun. And honestly, you can do this with lots of different designs and have a whole lot of fun with picking patterns and all those types of good things. I have these two paper pads here. Now these ones were, not only are they gorgeous, and I feel like I can make these coordinate a little bit, but these were a super good price point, full price. These are $2.99 at US dollars on the scrapbook.com website. And so you also get a little bit of a discount off that as well. I'm just using their coupon codes. And so this makes these a pretty good price for me and really fun to work with. So I'm going to pick out a couple of colors for this. As I said, I feel like um, a lot of these colors coordinate together, some of their packs. Um, and obviously one is solids, one is packs patterns and so I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with that again we're keeping these cards super super simple this is more of a sort of you know cut and go and punch the circles and go rather than you know really really intricate card making and I quite like that sometimes just being able to create imagine I, th I think all of these cards you could bulk create them and do the steps and create a beautiful amount of cards in a good short amount of time so with these two pieces here I am going to uh, work this together now I was wondering how I wanted the background to go which color I wanted to be more uh, prominent in the front but I think I'm going to go with the patterned paper we are still going to do a few little tricks with this paper so that we can make the most of it, of course. Now I'm going to cut this piece down. The card base is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I will cut this one to be slightly smaller. And then I have this piece of embossed cardstock. This is the diamond droplets uh, embossing folder. And I just had this to the side. This is left over from several projects ago that I've been meaning to use up. And this just might be the perfect time. Now, this is going to layer up nicely, but we don't want to waste this beautiful colored cardstock. So I'm actually going to punch out the circles and I am pushing the punch in kind of as far as it will go because I want to have that nice border and not see where I have punched out because only you and I are going to know that actually I punch those holes out. Once I get that embossed piece of cardstock in front of it, it's going to be just fine. So I will add a little bit of glue to the back of the white piece and then pop that down onto my layer there again no one is going to know at all I just need to not put it down on my desk because then the glue will go right through the circles and I'll glue it to my desk um, but once I have that all sorted I will start creating a flower out of my little circles now this is a really super easy technique to do 
And as I said, you can have a lot of fun with this one. So out of the solid cardstock, I cut the one and a quarter inch. And then out of the patterned cardstock, I cut the one inch. And then I'm just going to glue all of these together. Now six is going to work pretty good for this technique. So I just glue all of the little ones down on top of the solid ones. I am using my art glitter glue for this, but either that or my matte medium would have been perfectly fine. This one does set up very, very fast, <laughs> I will say. Um, so there's not a lot of wiggle time to move things around and get them in place. You really want to have it pretty good. Um, so once I have got six of these, you need to find a wee centre. Now, a button would look absolutely stunning in here. Um, you know, any kind of charm or bread or something like that to go in the centre. But as I said, I'm trying to keep these cards really, really simple. So I'm just picking up that pattern piece of paper and the one inch punch. And I'm just going to um, grab a little circle out of here. I wasn't sure if I wanted the one or the one and a quarter. So I'll do one of each. But I end up using the one inch one. And this is going to become the centre of our flower. But as I said, if you add in something else, I quite like the look of that too. But nonetheless, the easiest way that I find to create this little flower is by picking up all six of your circles so that they're kind of in my hand ready to go. And then I lay them down one at a time because if I end up doing it like this, I somehow get myself confused. <laughs> so pick them all up and then you lay them down just one on top of the other in a little tight-ish circle. And then that last one, you tuck it underneath and then these kind of all come together in the circle just so that they kind of all meet in one place in the center. What I do find really, really handy before I even get to this point with my hands on it is to have a little piece of mint tape or low tech tape or something that you can, you know, once you've got this exactly right, that you can pop down and glue this, you know, have it, it not glued, but stuck together so that you can move it around. But it does take, if you just take a minute and just, you know, don't aim for perfection, but put them all together and they will end up just gorgeous. Now imagine the different color combinations that you could do with this. It's absolutely a really fun and simple technique to do to create this gorgeous little flower. To glue this together, I'm just going to pop a little bit under each one of those little flaps there just to keep it all glued nicely. But as I said, I am going to add the yellow on top as well. Now this is going to become pretty much the focal element of our card, but we do need to add in a couple of extra little bits and pieces. Um, so pop my little centre in here. And what could have been fun as well, even if I had put the larger circle down, although I think that would have covered up a little too much. But honestly, if I were to go back and do this, I'd add in a button or something a little bit fun. But I was trying to use the paper that I had in front of me without complicating things too much, um, because sometimes that is just a great way to do card making. It simplifies everything for me, and I really enjoy that. So I was happy with how all of these cards turned out today. Now, this is looking good. As I said, I need somewhere for a sentiment to go. I need to think about balancing out the card a little bit more. I had this strip here that I thought would look really nice, but I think the card needs just a little bit of something extra. So when I was going through my stash and trying to find something, I did find this little piece of, um, this is from the, I think it's the Lace Borders. I will link it down below. And these are super handy to have. You can just die cut these out, store them in the back of the packaging, and then they create a really extra sort of dainty element to your cut. Now, you, of course, could use some real lace as well. That would look beautiful. Or some sort of ribbon to go along there to break it up as well. Then I, again, have another one of my sentiments cut out from my printables. Um, and so it's really easy to put all of this together. These are really, really quick cards to make. All three of these cards didn't take me very long at all. In fact, editing all of these videos and doing the voiceovers and the uploads and all those good things took me probably longer than it took to make the cards. So then I will put this all onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And then we will have finished three different versions of cards using circles today. Now I do think because I have that black sentiment here, I'm going to take a glaze pen and I'm going to add in some what I call faux black splatters because this controls everything. And I'm just going to add a decent amount of these, but start slow, start by adding a few, then look at it and see where the gaps are and where you might want to add in a few more. Make sure that some are bigger and some are smaller. And then I really like the look of this and it is much more controlled than doing actual black splatters because I had already added, sorry, so many of my elements that this was a much safer option. 
So I like the look of this and this just, you know, incorporates the black from the sentiment a little bit better than I had before. Then you turn this over and pop it down onto my card base and we are good to go. So I hope that you have enjoyed all three of these cards today. If you were inspired by any of these, then come over and join our Facebook group and post your creations or your makes there. We would love to see them. We have a very supportive, wonderful community that you can come over and join and you can post your makes so that I can see them. That's a really easy way for me to chat to you there. Um, and then otherwise, the printable sentiments are over on my website, Natasha footcreative.com there will be links to all of the supplies used the bargain paper packs used in today's video all those links will be down below this video as well as a link to my website and the facebook group and if you want to send me some snail mail then there is also a an address down there that i would love to receive your cards as well and can feature in our mail halls but that's all for today thank you so much for joining me and i will see you in the next video Bye.